Hi everyone, so new video, this time Algebraic Long Division. Now what is Algebraic Long Division? Well algebra Algebraic Long Division is when you have a problem say like 2x cubed minus 3x plus 1 over say x minus 1. This is an Algebraic Long Division problem. How do I know that? Well, <coughs> the order which means the power so the highest power of x here is 3, isn't it? This is an order 3. This is a cubic, right? The highest power of x on the bottom is 1. So the order of this, sorry about my crappy writing, is 1, right? So you know it's an algebraic long division when the power, the highest power of x on the top is equal to or more than the highest power on the bottom. So the highest power on the bottom is 1. Therefore, this is an algebraic long division problem. If we had 2x minus 1 over x minus 1, this is an algebraic long division problem because the power on the bottom is the same as the power on the top. If we had um, 1 take 3x take x squared over, uh, let's say, plus x4 over x squared plus 1, this is an algebraic long division problem because the highest power of x is 4 and the highest power of the bottom is 2, so it's definitely an algebraic long division problem. Even if I removed the x to the 4, it's still an algebraic long division problem. Okay, so hopefully that's clear. Uh, why would we need algebraic long division? Why do I need to split this thing up here into smaller sections? Well, if you were integrating it, you wouldn't be able to do that. You can't do that without algebraic long division. We can't integrate it. Now, when we integrate it, what do I mean by that? Well, roughly speaking, can you see we've got a 2x cubed here and we've got an x here. So if I divide 2x cubed by x, I'm going to get something to do with x squared, aren't I? So this is going to look something like ax squared, some constant in front of there. The next term in here, even though we don't actually have one, is 0x squared, isn't it? So 0x squared divided by x. I'm going to get some constant times x, you see? And then, obviously, x divides by x as well, so that's going to be some constant. So this minus 3x divided by x, we're going to get some constant. And then all I'm going to have left is the remainder, aren't I? The remainder divided by x take 1, dx. Now, this will make sense to you when we start. If you didn't quite follow that, it makes sense to you when we start actually doing it. But... This you can integrate, this you can integrate, this you can integrate, and this you can't integrate it yet, but you will be able to as soon as you learn the chain rule, all right? So why do I need algebraic long division? Well, one reason, a good reason, is we need to integrate sometimes. And when you start doing partial fractions in C4, you'll definitely be using this all the time. Now, there are three methods that you can use to do long division. We're not going to go through them all but you might see them in class, but we'll just quickly identify them in case you hear about them from other classes. So method one is called the bus stop method. I like to think about this as like your donkey, your mule, you know? It's slow, it's steady, it always gets you there, but you're not quite sure how, okay? So it's not necessarily the slickest way. The bus stop method looks like this. So you know in primary school, if you were doing like 66 divided by 11, the bus is called that because of this thing. Apparently, it looks like a bus stop. I, I, I'm not sure about it. I'm not sure. So if I was doing algebraic long division way, as you've probably seen before, if I wanted to divide my 2x cubed minus 3x plus 1, I would write my x minus 1 in there like that. So that's the bus stop method. But we're not going to do that one. Uh, the second one is called comparing coefficients. How does that work? This is why I really like method three, because method three is a blend of method two and of method one. So comparing coefficients, how does that look? Well, it looks a bit like this. So 2x cubed minus 3x plus 1, we're saying this is composed of x minus 1, which is the thing we're dividing it by, times by some quadratic, right? Because to get x cubed here, 2x cubed, I need to times that by, I need to times x by x squared, don't I, to make x cubed. So there's got to be some quadratic in here. 
And if, if, that, if x minus 1 times some quadratic exactly equals this thing, then there's not going to be a remainder, right? Then it's going to be completely the same and correct. But if there isn't, we're going to need some kind of adjustment here, and that's that remainder business. So roughly and quickly speaking, what am I trying to say? Well, if you multiply this out, so if we did it, so ax cubed minus ax squared, that's the first bit, plus bx squared minus bx, there's your second bit, and then you've got your c plus cx minus c, and then you finally got your r, yeah? If we were comparing coefficients, right, so 2x cubed minus 3x plus 1, look at it. We can see the, pat the number next to x cubed is a here, and the number next to x cubed here is 2, so a must be 2, right? The number next to x squared here is minus a, and also we have plus b. The number next to x squared here well, is 0, because there's none of them, right? And we know that a is 2, so therefore b must be a, and we know a is 2, so b is 2. And we can keep going. So what's the number next to x here? Well, the number next to x is minus 3. The number next to x here is minus b and plus c. Yeah. And we can carry on and we can find c and r. So that's quite nice. I quite like that one. And then method 3 is a blend of all of them. OK. And that's what we're going to do now. So let's go for it. Lots of examples. So if I want to divide x cubed plus 3x squared minus x plus 1 by x plus 2, right? This is my normal setup. So the, really, this is comparing coefficients, but uh, just in a slightly slicker way. And this always takes a little bit of getting used to for students, but you will get used to it. You just got to get in the zone, all right? So how this starts off is you're going to write x plus 2 on the top and you're going to write x plus 2 on the bottom. So denominator on the top, denominator on the bottom, right? We'll put a little w here, which is my working section, all right? So the objective is what we're trying to do is we are trying to find some bracket here that when I multiply that bracket by this bracket, I get this on the top, right? But it's probably, and if it does factorize exactly, if x plus 2 is a factor of this thing, then like the comparing coefficients way, there'll be no remainder. But if it doesn't, we'll need to adjust. We'll need to add a remainder on there, right? Because remember the idea is we want to multiply this and this so it matches this as close as possible. And if it doesn't, we'll have to make a little adjustment, which would be this section here. And this working section, this is kind of, what I have, and you'll see what I mean in a section in a second, and this thing here, my original, is what I want. Okay, so let's see this in action. I need x cubed, don't I? So to times to get x cubed, I need to times x by x squared. So this must be x squared. If I was to leave the brackets as they are now, just leave them, do I get what I've started with here? No. And let's times that out. So x squared times x is x cubed. So this goes in the what I currently have section. And then x squared times 2 is plus 2x squared, yeah? So that's what I have. If I left it, it clearly isn't what I started with. But we're getting there. So the x cubed, all good. So I'll tick that off. Then I'll move to the next power. So I have 2x squared. I need plus 3x squared. So I need to add another x squared, don't I? And how do I get an x squared by times its own by x? I need to plus x, yeah? So multiply out again to see what I've got. So plus x times x plus x squared plus x times 2 plus 2x. Can you see that now? Our x squareds match. Our 2x squared plus x squared does give me 3x squared. Hooray. And now we go to the next term, the next power of x. So here I've got plus 2x. I have plus 2x. So if I left this the way it was, this thing on the bottom is what I would have, which is not what I started with. So I've got plus 2x. I need minus x. So I need to subtract 3x. So I need to times x by minus 3. 
multiply that out again. So that's minus 3x, and minus 3 times 2 is minus 6. So now the x's are sorted. Yeah? So I've got minus 6, but I need plus 1. I can't put anything else in this bracket. It always ends with a constant. I can't put anything else in there. And if I put 1 over x in there or something like that, 1 over x times by this 2 is going to give you 2 over x, which is not what you started with. So everything outside is going to be your remainder. All right. So minus 6 to, to get plus 1, I need to add 7. So how do we finish this off? And what's the beauty of this method? Well, you can see that if we split the fraction up, x plus 2 here, plus 7 over x plus 2, can you see this cancels? So the answer is x squared plus x minus 3 plus 7 over x plus 2. Now, to keep this video shortish, <laughs> I'm not going to check this, but you absolutely should be whacking in x equals 0.01 into this and x equals 0.01 into this to see if they match or using that calc button, all right? Let's try example two. Hopefully we get in the swing of this now. So again, write this up. So 2x cubed plus 3x take one over x squared take one. Get my working section. What do we always do? Denominator on the bottom, denominator on the top. Yeah? Big brackets. Okay, I need 2x squared, uh, 2x cubed. What do I need to times x squared by to get 2x cubed? Well, I need to times it by 2x, right? Multiply it out to see what you have. So w, what I have. 2x times x squared, 2x cubed. 2x times minus 1, minus 2x. So the 2x cubed, all sorted, right? Then go to the next power of x. Remember, the next power of x is plus in here, 0x squared. Can you see there are no x squareds, are there, in here? So therefore, I don't need to worry about it. So I'll just move on to the next thing, because there's a 0x squared here. So I just leave it. Right. So I've got minus 2x here, and here I've got plus 3x. If I put a constant in here, right, in this bracket, it's just going to times by x squared, isn't it? So I'm going to end up with more x squared, so that clearly there's no constant remainder in here. You see, I could always put, I can almost put plus 0 in here to match my plus 0x squared. Do you see? 0 times that. Okay. So the remainder is always going to be 1 power of x less than what you're dividing it by. Can you see? So if you're dividing it by x squared, my remainder here is going to be something just to do with 1 power less. Because if I put any constant in here, it's going to times it by the x squared. So I can't generate anything lower than x squared, all right? So here I've got minus 2x. Here I need plus 3x. So my remainder, I've got to add 5x, don't I? And here I've got plus 0, but here I've got minus 1. So I need to minus 1 to adjust. Again, write it out what you have nice and neatly. So there's that. And 5x take 1, x squared take 1, bang, cancels. So 2x plus 5x take 1, x squared take 1. And again, calculator, x equals 0 0.01 into left and right hand sides. Let's do one more. So 2x to the 4 plus x take 7 over x squared plus 2x plus 1. So we always write the denominator together. Hopefully you're working through this with me, yeah? Don't just copy this down. Actually, stop the video and give this a go, right? Because you will not be able to see what's going on unless you try it. Working section. Remember, this is what I want. Uh, what I have, sorry. This is what I want, right? So I need 2x to the 4. What do I times x squared by? 2x squared then, yeah? Multiply it out to see what you have. So that's 2x to the 4 plus 4x squared, plus 2, sorry, 4x cubed, just left that out, plus 4x cubed, uh, plus 2x squared. 
So the, the two x to the four, all good. Now let's move on to the next power. I've got four x cubed. Here I've got no x cubed. So I need to subtract four x cubed, don't I? What do I times x squared by then? Minus four x. Now let's multiply that out again. So that's minus four x cubed minus eight x squared minus four x, yeah? So the x cubes, all good. And now let's just tidy this up a little bit because it's starting to look a bit messy. So I want to keep track of all my x squares and stuff. So I've got 2x squared minus 8x squared. So at the moment I've got minus 6x squared, yeah? So you could draw a line under if you want. Minus 4x. And now we can start going again. So I've got minus uh, 6x squared. I need no x squared. So I need to add 6, right? Close that bracket. Remember the last thing is going to be a constant. So now I'm going to multiply that out again. So that gives me 6x squared. So plus 6x squared uh, plus 12x plus 6. This is all good now. Yeah. Do the same again. Collect it all up because it's starting to look a bit messy. So minus 4x plus 12x. That's your 8x. And the plus 6 stays there. So I've got 8x. Here I've just got x. So to correct this, I need to subtract 7x, don't I? I'm starting to get my remainder. Here I've got plus 6, here I've got minus 7, so I need to subtract... Ooh, what's that? 13? Yeah, 13, right? Ooh, now I'm... Uh... <laughs> Are you serious? Um... Yeah, 13. Right. So, that's that. And now we can split this up again. So, x squared plus 2x plus 1 times 2x squared minus 4x plus 6, all divided by x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then we've got our remainder. I would always recommend writing plus and then just putting your remainder in. Right, so x squared plus 2x plus 1. And you can see these two cancel. So your final answer is 2x squared minus 4x plus 6 plus minus 7x minus 13 over x squared plus 2x plus 1. And there's your final answer. Again, 0.01 to check. All right, video over. It's a bit too long, that one, but we'll deal with it.